into paperairplanes.co.uk. Uh, today we're going to show you how to make the paper rocket, which is pretty cool. I was taught how to make the paper rocket when I was at university, actually by um, my fluid dynamics professor. Uh, the paper rocket basically allows you to demonstrate uh, in very simple terms um, surface tension uh, of water. Um, the idea is you take a little bit of a common, and I cut myself as I was doing this, so be very careful with scissors when you're, when you're working with scissors. You take sort of a common uh, back of a cereal box, this is from Cheerios, and then you cut out a rocket shape. Nothing too complex here. If you wish, you can draw it out on the box first. You can make it really sort of pretty and beautiful and be the exact perfect shape of a rocket. I'm not artistic. Um, if anything, I'm a, a scientist, so getting things to look uh, really pretty isn't what I'm good at. Now, the important bit of creating this is to create a channel down the back of the rocket, something like this, which would be essentially like the exhaust, if you like, of a rocket engine. So you see the channel there. Just clear that out. And then ideally you create a little tiny bulb at the end of that channel. So a little repository sort of circular-ish. Right. So you can see the shape of the rocket there. Then we put that to one side for a second. We've got this. Just a brownie tray. You can use any sort of flat rectangular um, surface and fill it with water. And probably spill some. It's not the end of the world. You can always just uh, wipe it up without any particular uh, problem. Just like that. So no hassle. And then and the reason that it's important to use a cereal box um, is because one side of the cereal box is sort of lacquered up um, and waterproof. So you can happily um, put it on the surface of the water without it, uh, without it sinking. So you just float it on the surface of the water here, just like this. You can see it's already starting to... Get a little bit soaked in, but that's okay. Then you take some of this washing up liquid, just add one drop, and you see how the rocket powers itself forward across the water. Uh, the better you do it, if the rocket doesn't soak, the further it can zoom across the water. Um, the reason that this happens is because the surface tension of the water is pulling on all sides of the rocket. So the surface tension pulling this way, this way, and this way. Washing up liquid disrupts surface tension. And because you have this little channel, you actually just disrupt the surface tension at the back of the rocket. So there's surface tension pulling to both sides and surface tension pulling forwards, which means the rocket then accelerates forwards across the water. Uh, it's a pretty cool way to demonstrate surface tension, and I'm sure you can do a better job of it than me, as my rocket is now sinking to the bottom of my little tank. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, please come back for more videos soon.